Four years before Jerusalem would be engulfed in flames, the city had erupted in clamor and violence. A full-scale riot was imminent. Burdened by the yoke of Roman rule, many Judeans had endured more than a century's worth of overtaxation, social injustices, and bouts of religious intolerance. Tensions were now at a boiling point. On the Judean coastline overseeing the Mediterranean was the Roman provincial capital of the region, named Caesarea. Although situated in Judea, the city was a haven for Greeks, Romans, and other non-Jewish peoples, or Gentiles. This was a city where Roman governors resided, such as Pontius Pilate, for instance. And, according to the Book of Acts in the Christian Bible, Caesarea was where the first Gentiles were baptized and converted to Christianity by the Apostle Peter. These converts were a Roman centurion named Cornelius, along with his household. Caesarea also served as a major port and harbor for the Levantine coast. By the year 66, however, Caesarea was a tinderbox, ready to ignite. According to the contemporary Jewish historian Josephus, after a number of Greeks sacrificed birds over chamber pots right outside of a local synagogue, many local Jews became outraged. They petitioned the governor, Gessius Florus. However, their grievances were unattended and the petitioners were imprisoned. This incident was not all too surprising since Florus favored the Greek and Hellenistic Jewish faction. Thus, following the Jews ceasing sacrifices on behalf of the emperor's well-being, a riot ensued. This riot was not just local to Caesarea, but spread to other cities with sizable Jewish populations, such as Jerusalem, and even as far away as Alexandria, Egypt. In Jerusalem, Governor Florus extorted money from the Jewish temple for the reason of paying the emperor, again provoking the Judeans to insurrection. Indeed, the profaning of a certain synagogue in Caesarea was not necessarily the reason for widespread revolt, but it was the breaking point for many Jews after numerous years of economic and cultural ostracization by Greco-Roman citizens and administrators. Now, circling back to the start of this video, the fires of unrest have now spread to Jerusalem. Once some Jewish militias attacked Roman citizens following the sack of the temple, Florus responded by sending troops into the city to round up the rioters and crucify their leaders. But the Judean militias fought back and defeated the Roman garrison. Because of Florus' ineptitude, he was replaced by Marcus Julianus. Seeds of rebellion were now spreading all across Judea, Samaria, and Galilee. To the north in Syria, another Roman governor named Cestius Gallus rallied his troops from Antioch to restore order to Judea. After massacring towns that resisted, he quelled the unrest in Caesarea and next set out to Jerusalem. Having failed to take the city, he and his three Roman legions with auxiliary forces totaling some 30,000 troops in all retreated back to Caesarea. However, Jewish rebels were lying in wait. As the Romans marched through the pass of Beth Horon, they were showered with projectiles like arrows, stones from slings, and javelins. Panicked and dismayed by the sudden attack, the legions could not get into formation. What ensued was a slaughter. The Jewish militias decimated a Roman army, killing about 6,000, with many more missing and wounded. The remnants fled back to Antioch, where Gallus died shortly thereafter. The Judean rebels had achieved a great and unprecedented victory, but would they have done so if they knew what was to come? These were the opening salvos of what would be a long series of bloody conflicts between Judeans and Romans. And in the next video, 
we will see how the Empire responds and how it will strike back. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you all next time.